Welcome to Introduction to React number 15. I'm Jack Harrington, at Jaher on Twitter, and this is Blue Collar Coder. So in the previous videos, we've been looking at state management. We're going to shift gears, and we're going to look at React frameworks, and in particular, Next.js. So we're going to port our Pokemon application to Next.js, which is a very popular framework. So why do we want to do that? Well, Next.js is a critical job skill in the React marketplace, so I want you to have that and understand how it works. But I also want us to look at the three different deploy methodologies that Next.js supports, and that would be client-side rendering, which is what we've been doing so far. There's server-side rendering, or SSR, which we'll cover in the next video. And then there's static site generation, or SSG, which we'll cover in the video that follows. But to start all that, we got to port our application to Next.js, so let's get after it right now. Okay, so here's what we've got today, and this is in Create React App. It's our Pokemon Search. We've all seen this before. So we're going to move it over to Next.js. Very popular React framework. So we're currently in Introduction to React, so let's bring up that because we're going to need to copy some files across and go back up a directory. And do npx create next app which is going to create a Next.js app for us, and then give it introduction to React dash Next.js. And let's let that chew for a bit. Now let's bring up VS Code. Then we'll start the application. And in this case, we will do yarn dev, which is essentially the same as yarn start. Just means start the application, but in development mode. And there you go, there's your Next.js boilerplate. So we want to get all of our code from here into there. So the first thing we need to do is copy across some files. So I'm also going to use the finder here. So open that directory. Now here is the Next.js app with its pages. We'll get there in a bit. But for the moment, I want to go and create a new directory called components. And then copy across our components from the original app. Next, I'll create a new directory called source, and that's gonna have the store as well as the Pokemon type. So let's bring across those. Now, source and components, you don't necessarily need to call those directories that. I have worked on a couple of Next.js apps, and they do generally have business logic type stuff in a source directory, and then shareable components in a components directory. The only specially blessed directory is that pages directory. Okay, so back in VS Code, it looks like those directories are there now. So over in Pages, we have index.js, and that's basically your landing page. So there's a ton of boilerplate in here. We're just going to remove all that. We don't need head anymore. So let's go over to app.js and start copying in some stuff. We'll bring in the imports. Paste those up at the top. Then bring in our style divs, paste those in there, and they'll bring in our app layout, and paste that in there. Now these imports are wrong since the components is now in a peer directory, so let's go and just add an additional dot. Okay, so a bunch more things to fix here, but first off, let's go and add in all of our libraries that we don't have. So we'll add in MobX, MobX React, Emotion Style, Emotion Core, Material UI Core, and I think that should do it. Let's take a look around. Yeah, it looks, looks to be about that. Okay, so let's go change our imports. First, we gotta fix up store. That's now in the source directory. Same thing here. Same thing here. Same thing here. Okay, looks pretty good. One more thing is we need our Pokemon JSON, so let's go copy and paste that out of the original project. And we're gonna go and create a new file in public called Pokemon.json. And public is just the static assets for this project. So this JSON file is gonna be hosted as a static asset. All right, let's start it up on Yarn Dev. And so right away, we run into something with Next.js when it comes to server-side rendering versus client-side rendering. So what's happening here is that 
Next.js is trying to render that homepage on the server. And the homepage is bringing in components. Those components rely on the MobX store. The MobX store has some code in it that does that initial fetch to go grab the Pokemon JSON file. What's happening is that it does the, the fetch here has the wrong URL. Now we could put on there HTTP localhost 3000 slash Pokemon JSON, which would be accurate and would allow for server-side rendering in this case, but I just want to go and execute this on the client only. So I'm going to take out that starting React. And then I'm going to say, if the type of window is not undefined, then fetch. And this is a really simple client side check. What it's saying is if there's a global called window and it's not undefined, then that means that we're on the client. So now we can server side render properly and it runs. How cool is that? So after going and changing all that stuff, now we've got our first Next.js client side rendered app. How cool is that? Okay, so let's close a few files out here. And I'm going to do a little fix up. I'm going to remove React from these files. You don't need to put in React. That's a thing in Next.js that does that for you automatically. And now let's go back into Pokemon Row. And I'm going to create a link to a Pokemon detail page. So we're going to create a page for every single Pokemon that you can link to. So let's bring in link from next link. And what link does is it provides client side linking functionality. So basically it gives you a, a spa of a sort. And we'll create a link with an href that points to slash Pokemon and then the ID. And then within that, an anchor tag. And within that anchor tag, we'll give it the English name. Now, why do you need to put an anchor tag in there? I don't know. Got me on that one. All right, so now we've got little purple highlights and blue highlights saying that we've got links on here. Obviously, I've clicked on some of these before. But when I click on them, now it gives us a 404 because it doesn't know how to resolve slash Pokemon slash two in this case. So the way that we handle that is under pages, we create a new directory called Pokemon. And then within that, we create a new file called bracketid.js. And what this is saying is when you see slash Pokemon slash one, then map one to a query parameter called ID and invoke this page. So we'll just drop a simple export in here. Hello there. And now we no longer get a 404, we get our hello there. So let's go back over to index and bring in some stuff. We'll bring in CSS baseline. We'll bring in styled. Bring in a page container. And now we'll wrap the thing in a page container as well as bring in the CSS baseline. Let's have a look. All right, now it's a little prettier. So how do we know what we got in terms of that ID? Well, that's handled by the router. So we're going to look for with router and import that from next. And then we're going to wrap this component with with router. And that's going to give our component a new property called router. And router is where we can find our query parameter. So in this case, router.query.id. Let's take a look. And it says there, hello, hello there, five. And that maps to slash Pokemon slash five, which is the URL. Okay, let's bring in our store. And then change this into a function that returns something. Okay, whoops, our import was wrong. So let's fix that. Okay, now it's compiling successfully and we have a store. Yay! Okay, so we'll get the Pokemon by doing a find on the store. And we'll get the ID. And then we'll find based on that query ID. 
at that point, we'll say, if we have a Pokemon, then we'll put up the name, Pokemon.name.english. Excellent. And Squirtle, if we want it, that's fine. Blastoise, great. So now let's do a little bit more just to make this more interesting. We'll start a table, which is defined by material UI core. Then define a header. And a row. And within that, a cell for the attribute, and then the value. And we're just going to go and iterate through all the base to go and create this table. So let's take a look. All right, we've got our header. That looks good. So now let's create a body. And then, and then get the keys for the base and then map through those keys. And then with every key, we're going to create a row with that key. And then we'll define a key based on key. Put in the key for the table cell and then put in the value from Pokemon base. Nice looking table, I like it. Now all of that table stuff comes from Material UI Core and gives you that nice look. And there you go. Not only have we ported our original application to Next.js, we've also now made it a multi-page application by creating a different set of routes. And we'll see as the next two videos show that we'll get more and more efficient as to how we build out those pages. All right, well, I hope you can see why people like Next.js. It's incredibly powerful and easy to use. So if you have any questions or comments about it, or you just wanna give feedback about this video or this series, please do that in the comments down below. If you like this video, be sure to like and share it with your friends. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button, click on that bell, and you'll be notified anytime a new video comes out. And there's also a newsletter that you can sign up for that has these videos a day earlier than everyone else. But in the meantime, of course, just be happy, be healthy, and be safe.